One of the questions I get asked the most often is how can I reduce the opacity of a background image? And that's exactly what we're going to be looking at in today's video. Hello, my front end friends, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I'm here to help you fall madly deeply in love with CSS. And I think one way that we can do that is to see how we can reduce the opacity of a background image. Now, the easy answer here is to use something like Photoshop Affinity or Figma to just alter the image to make it look the way you need it to. But if you need to do it with just some CSS, there is a way to do it, though it is not completely straightforward, but let's dive in and see how we can do it. So. Um, here is an example of what we might run into where you have some text on a background image and it's hard to read that text and changing the color of the text doesn't actually help because we have different colors in there. I guess it's a little easier to read now, but it's still not, it's not the best thing or you have it, it's looking good, but when you resize, whatever it is, we need to reduce the opacity of it. Now, the first thing people usually try is doing something like an opacity of 0.1, but then they realize that affects the div and the text that is inside that div. So it doesn't quite work as intended and we can't really uh, use that solution. So rather than doing that, what we actually can do is to pull the image out and put it somewhere else in a way. And we're going to see, learn a few little CSS tricks here along the way. And we're also going to uh, make it a little bit easier as we go through um, and, and fix all of this up. So I have my low opacity BG image class here. And what we're gonna do is come in with the same class, but I'm gonna do it on an after. And if we're using an after, which is a pseudo element, we do need the content property on here. So we can throw that. And in this case, I need a position of absolute on it. Now, because I am putting a position absolute here, I don't want it to be relative to the entire viewport. I want it to stay within my low opacity BG image. So on here, we're also going to come in and let's just come down to the bottom and here we'll do a position of relative and that will help us with, you know, prevent it from going where we don't want it to go. For now, I'm going to give this a background of red just so we can actually, let's go with pink so it's not as aggressive um, so we can actually see it. And I need to give it a size now. And for me, the easiest way to do that now when you use position absolute is just to give this an inset of zero. And inset is a shorthand for top, bottom, left, and right. It is relatively new, but browser support for it is also very good at this point. So as you can see, it is now taking up the entire space that we want it to, but we've run into this problem with it being in front of our content. So the way to solve that is by giving this a Z index as well to push it to the back. Um, I could also do something that actually selects all of this content and pulls it forward, but this is much easier. So we already need the selector anyway. So I'm going to do a Z index of minus one but the pink disappears. And that's because it's actually going behind this div and it would actually be, it's going behind everything. It's in like this, it's just, if you had other stuff on the page, you're potentially losing it behind everything right now, which we don't actually want. I want that pink background to replace this background that we have right now. So to be able to do that and prevent it from going behind, if you've been watching me for a while, hopefully you already know this answer because I talk about this a lot, which is isolation of isolate. And when we do that, Haha, we fixed our problem. Uh, isolation isolate creates a new stacking context, meaning that anything that is inside of here, the Z index can't escape outside of it. And in this case, that's exactly what we want to do. There are other ways of creating stacking contexts, but this one is nice because it has no other side effects. Whereas a lot of the other things that do create stacking contexts, that's not really their initial thing. It's just a side effect of what it is, like even if you put opacity at 99, um, you can also do a position relative. You could also just give this its own Z index instead because we do have a position relative, but isolation, isolate, the purpose is to create a stacking context. So there we go. And now really the magic has been done. The hard stuff has been done. What we could do is come here and I could say opacity of like 0.5 and we're controlling the opacity of that pink part. So right away, maybe this is actually more of what you want because the nice thing with this is you could put a brand color or something here instead of pink. My text is becoming more readable. You could do blend modes on this. You could do all sorts of different things and maybe a gradient on this with a blend mode, get some interesting effects going on and also have the bonus of actually making your text readable. But that's not what we're here for. We want to look at how to do this with a background image and we'll look at how we will have a lot of CSS here going on. So we'll also look at how we can fix this up a little bit more, but I'm actually going to take this background image off of here and we're going to come and place that background image over here instead. 
And by doing that, we now have a background image where I can control the opacity of it. The only problem with this is, well, it's working, it's a lot of code and it could be a little bit hard if somebody's coming in here to want to, you know, if they want to update it, they're looking through trying to find and then eventually you figure out it's on the pseudo element, but it's not super straightforward. So there's a couple ways we could actually improve this a little bit. Um, one of them is I'm going to take the URL from here. It's a nice big long one. I'm going to remove it from here. And I'm actually gonna remove the opacity from here as well. And we can take this background color off too. And what we'll do is we'll come up where we have this and let's delete all this stuff that we don't actually need. And what I'd recommend doing when you have more complex code like this or like different pieces going on, but ideally this is what's sort of controlling everything is we use some custom properties to do it. So we can come here and say BG image, and then we put the URL. Then here we could say BG image opacity, uh, B opacity and we could say it's like a 0.25 or something like that and so this selector is still what's controlling everything I don't need to look anywhere I can see it right in front of me and then down here we can set things up to use them so var bg image opacity and then here my var bg image and once again it's working so I never have to go and touch those things I just have to do this here change this it updates put it up to like a 95, whatever it is. Um, it just makes it a little bit more straightforward and easy to read when you're coming to modify things or change things. And it even opens up the possibilities of this being something you reuse over and over, but every div that you're using it on can have a different background image or a different opacity because you're just updating the custom properties for each one of those divs and everything will just work. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more quick CSS tips and tricks, I have a little playlist that is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I want to thank my enablers of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Lucas, Mr. Dave, Patrick, Simon, Steven, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.